The 2022 Winter Olympics is a major opportunity for Beijing to showcase and improve its international image. Like its theme song, Together for a Shared Future, the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, expects the Winter Olympics to show the outside world that China is prosperous and friendly under its leadership. The Communist Party has invested huge amounts of money and exercised tight control on all fronts to achieve this goal. But with the conditioning of 70 years of violent party culture, China's huge online population has become difficult to manage and can cause chaos for the party at critical times. On February 6, the hashtag JuYifel started trending on China's social media platform Weibo. It was viewed by 200 million people in just a few hours. The vast majority of comments severely criticized or ridiculed the figure skater named Zhu Yi. One comment, which said, shame on you, received more than 12,000 likes and replies. In order to increase China's medal count at the Games, the CCP has been recruiting overseas athletes to play for the Chinese team. Zhu Yi is one of them. Born in California, her original name is Beverly Zhu. In 2018, she decided to represent Team China. She gave up her American citizenship and changed her name from Beverly Zhu to Zhu Yi. On February 6, the second day of the team skating competition at the 2022 Winter Olympics, Zhu Yi was the first to take the ice. She skated into the rink slightly nervous, making errors of varying degrees, ending up with the lowest score in the program. The Chinese team fell from third to fifth in the standings, barely qualifying for the next round. The 19-year-old wiped tears from her eyes after the game, saying, I felt a lot of pressure. I just really wanted to show them what I could do, but unfortunately, I didn't. For a long time, the CCP's most effective brainwashing strategy has been to intentionally confuse China with the CCP, to lead the public to love the country and therefore the party, as a way of fending off criticism of the party. In the CCP's propaganda, the number of medals won in sports competitions represents the strength of the country and is used to incite feverish patriotism or love for the party. This propaganda follows a simple logic. An athlete is patriotic when he or she achieves results in competition. Losing points means that one is useless to the country, even disgraceful. As a result, Chinese athletes are under tremendous pressure to win medals in the Olympic Games. Plus, many Chinese are particularly sensitive to U.S. citizenship in the context of the deteriorating U.S.-China relationship. Moreover, there are many shady practices in Chinese sports which raise outrage among Chinese people. The failure of Zhu Yi thus instantly created an online tsunami. Many Chinese questioned why she was allowed to compete in the games. One comment read, Chen Hong Yi is much better than her. I don't know how such a person can represent China. Chen Hong Yi is another member of the women's figure skating team, but with only one spot for the Winter Olympics, she wasn't picked. Other comments made scathing references to her father, claiming that she was chosen because of him. Her father is an artificial intelligence expert who won the U.S. National Medal of Science. He returned to China in 2020 to head up a major research institute at Peking University, one of China's most prestigious universities. Someone even wrote, Zhu Yi is a thief, a thief, a thief. She steals other people's dreams. She steals other people's spot. Other comments suggest that Zhu Yi's Chinese isn't good and that she should learn Chinese well before talking about patriotism. Among the Chinese audience, there are some voices of reason. This matter is definitely not what it should be. As long as she represents China, or no matter which country she represents, even though she fell down, we have to look at it with a tolerant attitude. There should be no politicization and narrow-mindedness to treat this matter. Sportsmanship should come first. The sudden occurrence of the Zhu Yi incident and the attention it has attracted from the international media has made CCP officials aware of their mistake. If it continues to escalate, it's likely to turn criticism against the CCP. At the same time, the verbal abuse by Chinese people has undermined Beijing's attempt to present a friendly appearance. The official account of China's Weibo administrator said on the 6th that certain users had violated the rules. Some 93 accounts have been banned from Weibo for 30 days, or permanently. The related hashtags were also deleted. 
In response to the public's queries, the Chinese sports official told the media that there was no unfairness in the selection process and Zhu Yi was qualified for the Winter Olympics by ranking first in the overall score. Compared to Zhu Yi's experience, Eileen Gu, another American Chinese athlete, has had much better luck. She is now very popular and well sought after in China. On February 8th, Eileen Gu won the highest score in the freestyle ski jumping competition and won China's first gold medal in the women's snow event at the Winter Olympics. It's also China's second Winter Olympics gold in snow sports ever. The General Administration of Sports of China immediately sent a congratulatory letter praising Eileen Gu and wishing her and other team members well, saying, Win greater glory for the party and the people, and make a greater contribution to the realization of the dream of a strong sporting nation. The CCP Beijing Municipal Committee and government also sent congratulatory messages, praising her for winning the honor for the country and saying that this achievement would inspire the people of the city to strive to write the Beijing chapter of the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Neither the congratulatory letter nor the message mention the fact that 18-year-old Eileen Gu was born and raised in the U.S. and received her first-class ski training in the U.S. According to the Voice of America, Eileen Gu began representing China after the International Ski Federation in June 2019. She changed her nationality to China and would represent China at the Beijing Winter Olympics in 2022. Article 3 of the 1980 Chinese Nationality Law states that the dual nationality of Chinese citizens shall not be recognized, while Article 9 says that Chinese citizens who settle in foreign countries and voluntarily join or acquire foreign nationality shall forfeit their Chinese nationality automatically. However, a reporter for Radio Free Asia couldn't find any record of Eileen Gu renouncing her American citizenship on the U.S. Treasury Department's website. Recently, Red Bull, one of her main sponsors, posted a paragraph on its website stating that Eileen Gu decided to renounce her U.S. passport at the age of 15 and join the Chinese nationality in order to represent the Chinese team because China doesn't recognize dual citizenship. The American media, the Wall Street Journal, asked Red Bull, via email, to confirm that Eileen Gu had renounced her U.S. passport. After this move, the paragraph disappeared from Red Bull's website. The Wall Street Journal contacted the Chinese National Immigration Bureau, which handles citizenship issues, and didn't get a response. Clear, but if you still add your American citizenship and uh, if you, you live in the U.S. or in China from now on. So um, I definitely feel as though I am just as American as I am Chinese. I'm American when I'm in the U.S. and I'm Chinese when I'm in China. And I've been very outspoken about my gratitude to both the U.S. and China for making me the person who I am. So, to date, the question of Eileen Gu's nationality remains unanswered. Many analysts suspect that the Chinese government may have made an exception for her. Some analysts believe that Gu's fluency in Chinese and her excellent race record are the reasons for her popularity with Chinese media and netizens. So, in response to the issue of Gu's nationality, Chinese people led by official propaganda have posted comments saying that they don't need to dwell on her nationality and criticize some of the questions as malicious. Now Eileen Gu has more than 1.9 million followers on Weibo and is an advocate for several brands. Professor Rick Burton at Syracuse University told Voice of America, It could also be a gamble that Eileen Gu took. If she represents the U.S. team, she has to qualify in the U.S., which usually has a pretty rigorous qualifying process. And there's never a guarantee that you'll automatically make the team. I think she's probably guaranteed to automatically make the Chinese team so she can both honor her Chinese background and make sure she makes the Olympics. And if she doesn't do well in the U.S. qualifiers, she may not make the Olympics. 
It has also been suggested that Aileen Gu, who is also a model, may have considered a career in the Chinese fashion market. It's not ruled out that they were looking for a platform that is more representative of and brings them more personal benefits, but this also proves that China's sports and commercial environment is superior to the United States. The CCP has often been confronted with the awkward topic of nationality in its efforts to promote patriotism. Apart from people in certain professions who need to join the Chinese nationality for particular reasons, more often than not, Chinese celebrities and wealthy people choose to make money in China but strive to acquire the nationality of another country. For example, in 2009, the movie The Founding of a Republic was made as a tribute to the 60th anniversary of the CCP, featuring many leading stars in the cast. Chinese people quickly discovered that more than 20 of the film's stars, directors, and actors were born and raised in China, but became citizens of the US, Canada, the UK, Japan, Germany, Australia, New Zealand, Switzerland, and other countries after they became famous. As a result, Chinese people wrote, How can a person who doesn't even want to be a citizen of his own country show his patriotism? Another one wrote, what kind of spirit is it for a group of foreign friends to come to China from far away to shoot a Chinese historical drama? This is a spirit of internationalism. In addition to the entertainment celebrities, the Chinese business and political sectors also have a very big issue of nationality. In China, there is a term called naked officials referring to officials whose spouses and children have settled in foreign countries. While top officials may not have dual citizenship themselves, they have sent their families abroad to study or settle in order to transfer their corrupt assets out of the country. Chinese people have named China's most important political gatherings, the two sessions of the CCP, as the parents' meeting of European and American students and the Assembly of Australian, American, and Canadian homeowners. The issue of nationality has long been a troublesome topic for the CCP to justify and appease the public. However, the CCP has a massive propaganda system that allows for contradictory theories to be wrapped up in themes to manipulate the Chinese people emotionally. Many Chinese are completely lost under this omnipresent propaganda. That is why some strange phenomena are observed outside China. Chinese immigrants, for example, have worked hard to escape from communist China and gain citizenship in other countries. But some of them still criticize the new countries where they have settled, the so-called imperialism and capitalism, praise and miss the so-called motherland communist China, and refuse to face the disasters and tragedies created by the Red Party for the people. If you are in New York, you may see them too. This neighborhood in Flushing has a large Chinese population. They danced to red songs, glorifying the Chinese Communist Party. It is how they celebrated the July 1 Communist Party's 100th anniversary from far away in the United States. This video was republished in China's state-level media, including People's Daily. Against this backdrop, it is easy to understand the complex and conflicted attitude of the Chinese public towards sports immigration at the Winter Olympics, which is driven by a gold medal oriented patriotism.